Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is a um, pre-winter rest dendrobium chat and I hope it'll be helpful for people who are relatively new to dendrobiums or perhaps got some for the first time this year and are getting worried about this winter rest thing. Um, but before I start, <laughs> a word of warning. We've just had two cold nights and I mean last, last night was cold. I think we were down to about two, three degrees, um, quite a large part of the country had a frost. Um, you need to watch your nighttime temperatures. Now, this is probably not so important if you grow in the home, because obviously, you know, you're buffered by your temperatures for human comfort in the home. So chances are you're not going to get silly cold temperatures in a house. Um, nonetheless, if you grow in any form of outdoor environment, Mine is semi-outdoor, because although it's um, hanging out the side of the house, shall we say, it's still joined to the house, and the doorway I'm staying in can be left open at night, and the residual heat from the house goes into the grow room and stops it getting too cold prior to setting the heater up, which will be when it can't cope. In other words, there's not enough heat in the house to stop the temperature dropping too low. <clears throat> My low for the winter is 12 degrees C. I don't want it dropping any more than that, but it might be worth looking to see what we got last night because I did actually reset this. All right, that's the high temperature and the high humidity. And that's the low temperature. I actually went down to 14 last night. Now that doesn't warrant the heater coming out yet and last night was probably a bit of an exception. Um, we've got a north wind, cold air coming down, and clear skies. That'll do it. <laughs> um, but anyway, down to 14 is manageable. I'd prefer it not to drop that low. I'd prefer it to stay, you know, 16 would be nice. But um, I'm not getting the heater out yet. I'll get it out when I have to. <clears throat> Even the fogger's coming on. That's because the door's open and I've actually had to turn the heating on in the house for the first time this year. I was flipping cold this morning. The house was at 16 degrees when I got up. That's cold. You know, that's even cold for me and I'm quite cold tolerant. <laughs> anyway, as such, drier air is coming in here. So the fog is working at a low temperature because the humidity's dropped down below the setting. That I will have to watch. Um, that is very cool mist and at the moment the temperature is well below the circulating fans and that cold mist is dropping straight on my Orangus. So we'll stop that for a start. In fact I'll turn it off for now. It's the time of year when all the settings have to be reviewed basically. Um, it's just one of those things. Anyway, back to the dendrobiums. <clears throat> I've already chatted about the um, continuous growers which in the main in my place are the Dendrobium phalaenopsis type and the Latoria types. And the main distinction is do they come from evergreen forests? If so, they'll be drier in the winter but they won't rest. They don't need that chill. In fact, giving them a chill won't do them any good at all. They'd prefer to stay warmer in temperatures more suited to evergreen tropical forests. Yeah, But then you get those that come from deciduous forests. Now the reason the forest is deciduous is it can't cope with the winter. So the, the trees dump their leaves. I mean that happens with virtually everything in the UK except for the conifers who can hang it out basically. <laughs> um, they're hardy. Um, but in between the two are what I call semi-deciduous. In other words they do drop their leaves but they don't drop them every year. They take longer than that. And that's a nice telltale sign, is um, I've got annual deciduous, things like a nosmum, primulinum, um, and they grow lovely big strong new growths like this, yeah? That, that's this year's new growth, that's um, nearly three foot long, and it's still growing, it hasn't reached its terminal leaf yet. That's what you're watching for, yeah? So that keeps growing as long as I can. The temperature, you know, daytime temperatures will drop down and nights will start dropping and that will trigger the plant to stop growing. But until it does, it will still get watered and fed. Yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. Now those are annually deciduous. That cane's fully leaved at the moment, as is this one. That's another um, of the similar type. 
I think that is actually a Nosman, whereas this one's Nesta, I believe. I'm not getting them down at the moment. But you can see this, this growth is still growing. It's still pushing out new leaves. It hasn't reached the terminal leaf yet, so it'll, I'll continue to water and feed. <clears throat> but through the winter, most of those leaves will turn yellow and drop. Uh, and it can be a bit worrying if it's your first time in the winter and all your nice new growth <laughs> dumps its leaves. Um, that's how they are. They're annually deciduous. If they are annually deciduous, deciduous, they need the winter rest. There's always a but. Here's a but up here. Now I'll get it down. This is going to be fun today because I'm not actually watering them out, so they're all staying where they are in the main. Now this is my Jenkins CI, yeah? This is not annually deciduous and keeps its leaves for several years. Nonetheless, it's a true winter rester. So there's always an exception to the rule, yeah? And this one, at the moment, is still producing new growths here and there. Although most of the new growths are now starting to mature. So it's coming to the end of its growing season. It has pushed out a lot of new growth this year. It's gone right round the end of the mount at that, at that growth point. And the two lower growth points, you can, you can see two separate growth points there on the left and the right. <coughs> and they've pushed out, oh, there is a single new growth down there just coming out. There's another couple there. But this has grown right down and underneath the mount. So, it, so it's, it, eventually I think it's going to actually cover the mount. Then there's a growth point at the top pushing out and a smaller one at the side there. So over those growth points, many new growths. Those leaves won't drop this winter. They may not even drop next winter. So it's certainly not an annually deciduous dendrobium. Now the Jenkins CI comes into what I call the aggregatum category. There are many plants in that little set in my mind that look the same. They all have these squat pseudo bulbs, single leathery leaf and they're very compact plants. I think the aggregatum is a bit bigger than Jenkins CI in its overall appearance but the appearance is the same. These are the oldest bulbs. These are dead. They're shriveled. I could probably pull them off if I tried. That's the center of the plant. That's the plant I first bought. That bit there. And it's spreading out in all directions. <coughs> That needs a true winter rest to get it to bloom well. If it doesn't get it, you might get some blooms. If it doesn't get any form of rest at all, you'll probably get none. It's quite fussy about getting that temperature drop. Yeah, So that's that sort. Um, let's have a look at some others. This is Dendrobium moniliform. It looks like it, looks like it might be coming into bloom. Um, but then it does produce kikis as well. Now this is deciduous, but it's not annually deciduous. So this probably comes from deciduous forests, yes, but in a place where it doesn't get too cold in the winter. So it's capable of doing a bit of growing, but not as much as in its growing season, obviously. So semi-deciduous, loses its leaves eventually, but not every year. So although it may need a rest to get blooms, it may not. You've got to get down to individual plants. This particular plant looks like it might be about to bloom. So is it the winter rest that induces the blooms? Is it hell? This can bloom any time. It blooms when it feels like it. Um, and it tends to bloom the year after the canes are produced. So these are the two strong canes from this year. They're not going to bloom, I would doubt very much, until sometime next year, when those two canes might put on a good show. Um, these are last year's growths, and it looks like they may be going to bloom. And just because a cane's bloomed on this type, certainly on moniliform, doesn't mean to say that cane won't bloom again. It can sometimes have another little go later on from some of the other nodes. The um, buds come out from <coughs> in between the leaves. They don't have like terminal spikes that come out of the very top. They tend to come out from farther down the cane. So uh, that's one of those. This tiny little miniature I've only just got from Alberto, and I haven't looked it up yet, so I haven't got a clue what to do with that. I will look it up. It was, you know, it's too early to start panicking. <laughs> it's not winter yet. Uh, but if you come from quite a lot farther north, 
you know, north top of Canada, Alaska, or up, up into some of the Scandinavian countries, your winter's going to come earlier than mine. And if you're down in the Mediterranean, or more down into the northern states, or a bit lower, your winter may come a bit later than mine. This is Dendrobium lodigesii. And again, this is semi-deciduous. Lots of new growth on here this year, some really good canes. Um, I haven't had this plant long, I got it last spring, I believe. Um, so it was strong enough to rest last winter, so it did get its feed reduced to nothing and it did get its watering greatly reduced. But it didn't dump all its leaves on the older cane. Yeah, that's an old cane. It still hasn't dumped all its leaves. It may well lose the rest of these leaves this winter, but it doesn't dump them annually on the new growths. <clears throat> so, yes, it needs the drop in temperature and the brighter light, but it might not need to chill down as much as some others. Yeah? Um, a lot of these new canes this year have stopped growing, so they have reached their terminal leaf. And in the main, across this plant, I would say that's the case. So in the case of this plant, now's the time to stop the feed. But I don't stop it dead, I reduce it. So I'm getting to the point now where I might have to do two separate waterings from my mounts. One with the still, you know, maintaining a decent level of feed, and others with a reduced feed. Um, bearing in mind I'm only watering every two or three days on the mounts now. The days are getting shorter. We've passed the equinox. Now these are Dendrobium lodigesii kikis. They're not going to get rested. Yeah? So irrespective of the mother plant, things like seedlings and kikis should be grown on as best you can until they get up to flowering size. And when you've got what I call the fit as a butcher's dog type plant that is blooming size, that will be the first rest it should get. Up until that point, just keep it growing if you can. Yeah, get the strength into the plant. Um, I've suffered. Um, last winter was the best winter rest I've ever done, and I got good bloomings on those types. Um, the winter before, I tried the coolest room in the house treatment. I lost two plants. They were too weak to be rested. And I think in addition to that, putting them up in a cool bedroom on the windowsill in the brightest light, they lost their humidity. They came into the drier atmosphere of a house and it didn't work. Yeah, So we stopped doing that dead in its tracks. <laughs> but this winter will be the same as last year. Um, let's get this one down. because this, this has got a nice mix to look at. Um, I'm going to run out of space very quickly here. Really old canes, totally leafless, unbloomed canes, yeah? The plant was too small, it hadn't reached blooming size, yeah? Second set of older canes down here, yeah? So these are last year's new growth. Um, starting to drop their leaves, yeah? Some of these bloomed this spring, some didn't. Those that didn't may still bloom next spring, they may never bloom. It might just have been that that was the last new growth prior to it re reaching full blooming size. And as I said, you can see there's another cane here that um, I haven't trimmed them off yet. But nonetheless, within that plant are this year's growths. These are they. Have they stopped growing? Have they hell? Yeah? So this will carry on getting watered and fed. And I now know it's blooming size, yeah? So the latest growths should bloom. But if you look at the size of the swellings on the older canes compared with the new ones, these canes are still at it. These canes still need to be pushed on. And hopefully, you know, we'll get the type of autumn that gives sunny days and gets the temperature up in here. And I can keep them growing on. Nonetheless, they're a good length. See, this one's swelling quite nicely now. This one's a bit behind, um, this one's not too bad, this one's not too bad. Um, but those swellings on this particular plant, which is, I've forgotten, nope, it's got a tag, whew. <laughs> I know I'm going to pick some up without tags, that's Findlay Annum. Um, and the bulbs on this year's growth, these bulbous nodes, will carry on swelling through the winter. 
Yeah, I wonder where they get the energy to do that when I'm going to reduce the watering and the feed to next to nothing, if nothing at all, probably. But yeah, so that's a not a fully deciduous one, it's eventually deciduous. So I'd say that's a semi-deciduous one. Last year's growths will probably dump the rest of their leaves during the winter, which as I said, is a trifle worrying, they turn yellow and fall on the floor. Um, but the canes that have been produced this year won't drop their leaves this winter, they'll hold them, probably through the rest of next year. <clears throat> so semi-deciduous, not truly annually deciduous. Anything that's truly annually deciduous needs the winter rest. It's designed that way. That's how it's evolved. It gets a harsher winter, so it probably gets quite low temperatures. It'll get good light, all the leaves fall off the trees, and um, it'll be a dry season, yeah? The winter season will be quite dry. There won't be much rain around at all, but that doesn't mean the plants get no water, because they still get mist and fog, the humidity is not too bad and they get morning dew. So they do get some moisture. They're not bone dry for three months. I don't think there's any part of the world where that exists and orchids grow. <coughs> um, epiphytical orchids, I mean, some of the terrestrials might be in a different category, but I don't grow those. So that's really what you're looking for. Let's get another biggie down before I'm going to run out of space. As I say, I'm not getting everything down, but um, I do want some practical examples. Let's get Jenkins here out of the way, then I can use that corner post. Right, so this is another biggie with no tag. Um, I'll find out what it is. Um, this is another semi-deciduous. Yeah, the canes do eventually become totally deciduous. And you can see where those blooms were. They were on those canes. Yeah? This is all this year's new growth. Is it still growing? Yes, therefore it will get watered and fed. Eventually the shorter days and the lower temperatures will affect the plant enough that it will produce the terminal leaf. Yeah, And as soon as that term, you know, it might happen on canes at different rates, but there'll be a first. I'm not going to take bets on which one it will be, but I'll bet it's this one. <laughs> but at some point, one of these new growths, all this lot sticking up the top, will produce its terminal leaf. And at that point, I can start reducing the feed. Because the others will not be far behind. They will follow suit. Yeah? Now, I could take this plant and keep it warm and keep it watered and fed. And the canes would probably get quite a bit longer. They wouldn't stop growing under those conditions. The plant would wonder what the hell's going on, because it's not how it would normally grow. But you can keep them growing and get really long canes. But you're unlikely to get the blooming. Yeah? So you make a sacrifice. And this is the bit where it's hard to decide. Is your dendrobium, that could do with the rest, reached fully blooming size yet? Because if it hasn't, Quite honestly, you just as well grow the canes on. Get them as big as possible. And then the chances are next year, when it really is blooming size, you'll get a much better blooming following the rest. So it's still at plant level. I still can't generalize totally and actually say, this is what you do for this plant. And each year it will vary. Autumns will vary. Sometimes they'll come early. Sometimes you can get quite a harsh autumn with bitter cold weather. Um, and other years, it's mild right into November. Well, the plants will probably keep going, and it's the day length that will shorten their uh, ability to grow, rather than the temperatures. Now this one, I haven't even looked up yet. This came out of the big box. Again, no tag. I must get these tags done. But I can see from looking at it, either it's had a really bad time and dumped its leaves, or it's a pretty deciduous type. Um, all of the old canes that were on it when I got it had no leaves, so they were already, they dumped their leaves. <clears throat> a couple of the canes still had a few leaves, but they haven't grown. And this plant was in a bit of a bad way. You know, it, it, it wasn't looking happy. But during this year, it's put on a lot of new growth, all of which are still growing. Now, some of that new growth is kikis. They're away from the base of the plant, but nonetheless their roots have got down to the base, so they can stay on and become part of the plant. A few came out directly from the base, but I haven't looked that one up yet. 
simply because I don't need to yet. Yeah? These new growths on this started late in the year. They're certainly not full size yet, because these older canes dictate <coughs> the size of the canes that this plant's capable of producing. These growths haven't made it yet. So the chances are, I may not rest that one. Once I've looked it up and found out, I may go against the grain, yeah? Even though I would say that's probably blooming size, I can't tell definitely, I haven't had it long enough, but the canes are short. They haven't got much growing season left, so with this one, it might be worth pushing it through the winter and try and keep these canes growing if I can, and then think about what to do with it as next winter arrives, <coughs> when it will have its strength back from the new growths, and next season it will produce even more new growth. So by the time that one gets to autumn next year, that's going to be a large, strong plant that'll take the rest. I would say it's inadvisable to rest a weak plant. Um, it won't have that inner strength, the, you know, the stored, stored energy in the canes <coughs> to survive. Um, and speaking to quite a few other growers that have gone down the path of the winter resting types, quite a few of them have said that they lost plants to such an extent they don't grow them anymore because they couldn't get it right and they lost plants, they actually died. And I would suggest that the sort of plants that are going to die are ones that were rested that were just too weak. So try and gauge the strength of your plants before you attempt to give them a full winter rest. Um, if you don't get that right, you could lose your plant or set it back so much that next year's new growths will be poor. Yeah, so, you know, go steady what you're up to. But, um, yeah, some of mine have uh, grown really well this year. I won't be able to get it down, but um, here's some more examples here. Um, this is a winter resting type, yeah? Totally deciduous canes, annually. This cane is this year's new growth. This new growth started in the middle of winter and stalled. It didn't make it. This cane's pushed on quite nicely and is slightly longer than any cane, other cane on the plant. It's virtually finished growing. I suspect that is the terminal leaf. So that one, I'll have to watch my step, yeah? I'll see if I can move that one and get the next one down. Again, I haven't even looked this one up yet. I don't need to. I know what I'm going to do with this. Very, very weak plant when I got it. One very, very long cane on it that has actually just produced a new leaf. I didn't notice that. I thought that cane had had it. But it had two good kikis, so I took them off and put them at the base of the plant. Those are those two. Um... I don't think they've finished growing, but then, uh, beyond all hope, it did actually push up a proper new growth that is still growing. That wouldn't get rested under any stretch of the imagination. I've got three growths on there, and two of them are kikis. I'm certainly not resting that plant. That's its new growth. It only started that a few months ago. It's not ready to th even think about resting. It's only just recreating a new root system. That one, another one with no tag. I keep saying I'm gonna do this and I never get round to it. Maybe today's the day because I've got no watering to do. Um, <clears throat> but that won't get rested. It's not strong enough. It's nowhere near strong enough to so even think about it. Not, you know, 100% I will try and grow that one on without even thinking about it. It doesn't matter what it's called. It's growing, it's young, it's weak. So that one will get grown on. Um, another annually deciduous one, you know, you can see the leaves start reducing in size and that's a terminal leaf on that cane. Um, that probably is its last leaf, maybe one more. So that one's slowing up. The one I daren't rest is the one behind it. That's this year's bush of new growth that's the size it needs to get to. So irrespective of whether that's supposed to be rested for the winter, I will keep that one ticking over because that's actually touching the roof now. Um, I need to get that a bit lower down, otherwise uh, 
we do get a hot day, it'll singe. But um, all of those new growths up the top are nowhere near full size. They started late in the year. That's a mature plant. It's capable of blooming, but I'm not even thinking about blooming that. I'm thinking about getting those new canes grown on through the winter, ticking over, and then they can finish growing next year when I'm probably going to get another lot of new growths. That's a monster. So th that's a clue. I've got an exception to the rule. Um, Hercoglossum is fully deciduous, but it takes three years. So it's not annually deciduous. And this one grows through the winter. It slows down, but it grows through the winter. And um, the canes effectively are a three year cycle on this one. It is a bit unusual. Um, so the new growths come out late spring and grow on through that first season. They grow on through the winter and they carry on growing through the second season into the second winter. And they stop growing during that third season. And they usually bloom the second and third season of those canes. Yeah? So that's an unusual one. I haven't got many like that. So that's an idea of what to be looking for. Yeah? It, and it's really the categories. Annually deciduous, if it's a mature plant capable of blooming and it doesn't get the rest, the chances are it won't bloom. Then you get the semi-deciduous ones that don't dump their leaves in their first winter. They hold them throughout some or all of the next season. Yeah? Okay, if it's a mature plant, you might have a go at resting that one to induce blooms. But some of those are, will bloom without a full rest. Um, you take the nobilies. I've only got, I haven't got many left now because I gave quite a lot of the larger plants away. Um, that's one there. That's my uh, prima donna. <coughs> you can see where the new growths are. Yeah, they started late. It got split. It got disturbed. It got split up and repotted. It set it back. Tough. <laughs> it had to be done. Um, but the new growths are nowhere near mature. So even though I would give that a semi-rest, I don't fully rest my nobilies, I, I, you know. But those, those canes are nowhere near full size, so I'll grow that on this year. I may still get some blooms on the older canes. Um, I might get some late blooms on those new canes. But it's tough. Um, I'm literally splitting the plant, repotting it, rejuvenating it as I call it will probably have sacrificed some blooms, if not all of them, this year. So be it. Look forward to the following year. That's the way I look at it. So, uh, yeah, an inkling as to what to look for. And it's these terminal leaves on your newest growths. Those are the trigger point. And when you've got lots of new growths, like on this one, it'll be the first one to hit that terminal leaf. And as soon as that happens, I know the plant's starting to think about slowing down. And I will then help it slow down, reduce the feed over the next couple of weeks till I get down to nothing. And then slowly reduce the watering down to next to nothing. And I'll re-emphasize again, not nothing. I don't believe plants can survive with no water at all for extended periods. But it's temperature dependent again. So that's a look at some of them and some thoughts. It's not time to start resting most of these plants. But some of them are there. Yeah, this one is. It's only got that single new growth. And I doubt if it's going to produce any more leaves. So this one's thinking about having a rest. And then I'll backtrack. Why do I need to backtrack? This came from Alberto. This is a phyllum, Dendrobium a phyllum. And what did I get? One single large kiki, which is the totally deciduous cane. That actually bloomed. That was all I got, was a kiki. And since then I've produced one full-size cane. So is that a mature adult plant? No. But nonetheless, it's bloomed. So that's a decision yet to be made. It is blooming size, it bloomed on the kiki. Yeah? And then it's produced a wheat growth, which started at the wrong time of year, that has stopped growing, <coughs> and one good growth. 
Now if I don't rest that properly, the chances are I won't get many blooms. If I do rest it properly, I might get the blooms, but I could lose the plant. <laughs> so that one needs extra care this year. And then hopefully next year, it's now back in season after its disruption of being separated from a mother plant. This winter and next year will kick it back into its proper season and hopefully the new growths will start earlier in the year. Um, and hopefully more than one good one next year, maybe two, maybe three. So that one I'll take a little bit of extra care with. Uh, right, what else? I think that's about it. <coughs> yeah? So, you know, I've got those that don't rest, the continuous growers. I've tho those that aren't ready to be rested because they're either too young or too weak. Maybe next year, but certainly not this winter. Those that need a semi-rest, so I don't withhold the water quite as bad as the true winter resters. They get a little bit more often on the grounds that they're trying to hold their leaves more than one year. And then the bottom line, those that dump their leaves annually are full winter resters and they can have their water reduced quite dramatically but not stopped altogether. Um, and some I haven't even looked up yet. And as I said, the reason I haven't bothered looking them up is that they're not getting rested this winter whether they like it or not. So irrespective of their origins or anything, I'm going to try and keep them growing. They're not strong enough yet. So th those are they, and that's a chat about heading towards thinking about a winter rest. And apart from the odd plant, I'm not there yet. Yeah, I've got stuff still pushing out good leaves at the top of its canes. And as long as they want to carry on doing that, I'll let them do it. And the thing that will stop them doing it, shorter days, lower temperatures. Not me. It won't be me reducing the feed or the water until the plant's ready. Yeah. Now, hibiki. Somebody asked me specifically, am I going to rest that? And answer, no. Irrespective of whether it needs a rest or not, this holds its leaves for many years. They will eventually drop, but not for quite a few years. And this has a new growth that's nowhere near mature. And I think buried in there somewhere, it's starting another one as autumn comes. I don't know, that could be a flower bud. Yeah, but I'm not resting that. The only new growth it's pushed up is this one. And that's nowhere near full size. Yeah, and it's still actively growing. So that will get the treatment that all the plants in here get, irrespective of their genus. <clears throat> and that is, because of the shorter days and because of the lower temperatures, they will slow up and some will almost stop. Well, in, under those conditions, keeping them soggy wet at the pot, you're going to lose your roots. So all of these plants will get reduced water and reduced feed because they've slowed up because of the short days and the lower temperatures, which in their natural environment they might never get. Things like the cattleyas. I doubt if many of them get flipping cold winters, <laughs> otherwise they'd drop their leaves, yeah? So, uh, yeah, that's it. It's just a matter of thinking about your own conditions. Now, if you're growing in the home, doing a true winter rest is not going to be that easy because you won't get that drop in temperature and you won't get the intense light in a home. You know, even in your brightest window, a window can only face in one direction. And if it faces fully south in the northern hemisphere, that's the best light you can give it. But when the sun comes up and when the sun goes down, it's not shining in the window. Now I'm okay with that, you know, <clears throat> sun comes up over here and comes round and goes down over there and all the shade netting will be off. They'll be in full sun when we get some. So that's the best I can do and it seems to work okay despite the short days. It worked well last year. But it could totally de be dependent on the number of sunny days we get when the days are short. Because that's what they need. They come from deciduous forests, the leaf cover's gone, so when the sun's out, they're in it. Yeah, they might get a little bit of shade from twigs and stuff, but not much, compared with when the leaves are on. And that's the bit, I think, is probably one of the real important things. It's not how bright your light is in the winter, 
it's how different it is. So those that need that extra bright light in the winter, by not giving them quite so much light in their growing season, you, you can do the change to get what they think is much brighter light, even though in reality it's not as good as it perhaps ought to be. But it's different enough to their, from their growing season to make it work. And that's how I think I achieved my good winter rest last year was that all the shade netting came off. They were in full sun when we got some. And the sun comes in through the sides in the winter, not through the roof, the sun's too low in the sky. So all the ones that need that bright light as part of their winter processing, they get put in a place where when the sun comes in, they get it. Yeah, so this long line here needs to change and become a bit more that way. So some will start going up there and up there to get that light, yeah? So uh, that's how I do it. And um, certainly last winter it worked well. And some plants that I may have got, again, we'll go back to this, um, this bush up in the corner with the mass of new growth up there that I'm not gonna stop growing. Because of the lower temperatures and the fact that that's in the bright light, these older canes may still bloom but I'm not reducing the watering enough to rest it properly because I would lose the growing area at the top, which is massive. There's over 30 new growths up there in that bush. <laughs> I'm not losing them, you know, for the sake of some blooms. I'll wait till the following year and perhaps get a much, much better blooming. We'll see how that goes. So there we go. That's the start of the winter rest thought processes, but certainly I'm not starting my winter rest yet. Um, probably, depending on how autumn goes, whether we get the low temperatures or whether we get lots of consecutive dull, miserable days with the light levels dropping, in the main it's probably going to be around the middle of October. That will also be the point where we drop down below the 11 hours. You know, that magic 11 to 13 hours which that most of our plants would get in their natural environment or in the UK we're going to get a lot less, yeah? And that process really starts around middle of October towards the end of October, where the day lengths just start getting shorter than um, they would like. And that's the point where hopefully the grow light may come in, when I work out where the hell to put it. <laughs> but as that's um, at least three or four weeks away, I'm not putting a lot of thought into that yet. I'll get round to that later. So there we go. As I said, there's going to be a a whole set of these um, taking dendrobiums into the winter period as we go through that you know period of autumn and into winter so there'll be a set of them I'll actually set up a new playlist where I can put them all together so you can find them easier and um, yeah they'll I don't know how frequent um, but possibly one a week or at least every 10 days because we're heading into autumn now so, you know, now's the time that things are going to start changing. So I'll try and keep posting along the same lines. And a lot of it will be looking at the same plants to see what's happening. I mean, this is a good one because of the sheer number of new growths and their size. So this one we can keep a close eye on. Yeah? And start looking for those terminal leaves and see when we get them, what time of year it actually is. That'll be different each year. As I said, I don't use the calendar, I use the plants. Look at the plants, they'll tell you what they're up to. Or in some cases what they're not up to because they have got to that point where they've stopped growing. So you've just got to keep your eye on your plants as individuals. Um, <clears throat> if you've got thousands, you'll probably have to treat them as one massive set. But I haven't. I've got a lot. As I say, it's probably a third of my collection are dendrobiums. But, um, you know... A plant at a time, one at a time, and as I said, I may have to well go to watering some with one level of feed and then the rest with a different level of feed because they've reached a different stage. And that will happen at different times, so I'm, I'm prepared to do that because really it's only over a five, five week period at the most. You know, if you think halfway through October, probably till the end of November. That's the thinking bit. That's where things are changing. And once you get to December, January time, you're there. 
<laughs> so everything sort of switches back to being treated the same by then. So uh, we'll see how we go. And I'll see you next time.